Hello, my name is Thiago Davi Cori Buzarello. In this video, I'd like to discuss with you the delay of PWM in power electronic applications. This topic is subject to discussions in classes, conferences. Very often, I hear some students asking me why should I consider the effect of the delay of PWM in power electronics and why sometimes some people do not consider the delay of PWM on their applications. Also, in conferences, we see some papers that authors consider the effect of the delay of the PWM while other people do not consider. So, in this presentation here, I'd like to show you these two kinds of controllers. One, one is a digital controller considering the effect of the delay of the PWM, and another one is the same digital controller, but the design is not considering the delay of the PWM. And this is interesting because it depends on the application. If you ask me about should you consider it, the delay of the PWM for all applications, actually this is not an easy question. And the answer is, of course, it depends on the application. It depends also, also on the controller that you are using in your application. A lot of facts that must be considered in using the delay of the PWM. It also depends on the switching frequency, the sampling frequency. So the intention of this video is not to answer if the effect of the delay of the PWM must be considered in the controller design. The goal of this presentation is just to give you an idea that you can sometimes neglect the delay of the PWM when designing a digital controller. Actually, if I should to decide consider or not consider this delay, most of cases I think it works without considering the effect of the delay of the PWM. But again, it depends on the applications, the controller you are using, and a lot of parameters. Let's go. So I'm here with my simulation files, my script in MATLAB, where I have here two kinds of controller, one using the delay, another one not using, and I have here a simulation file in PC. Returning here to the slides, in order to verify two controllers, I'm using here an active power filter, a traditional application in power electronics. I have here the grid, the nonlinear load, the active power filter, and the control. This control is supposed to be digital and I will design two controllers, one considering and another one not considering the delay of the PWM. The control strategy for this active power filter is this one. It's a traditional control strategy. I have here the output current, the reference, the sensor, the digital controller, the PWM and the plant. All of them in the digital domain. I'm not showing you here the sampling, but the sampler and holder, but it is assumed that it is here in this diagram. Let's begin with the first case. Here in my script, I have some initial parameters. The fundamental frequency is 50 Hz. This is the DC link voltage. The switching frequency is 25 kHz. And the cutoff frequency is 10 times lower than the switching frequency and I have here desired merge phase margin equals to 50, 55. If you go down here, I will comment this line and uncomment this. This is my transfer function without considering the delay. I need also to change this, comment this. If I run this script, Later you can take a brief, a better visualization of this script. I'll show you the figures later, but just for the purpose of your better acquaintance of this script, I have here the transfer function, which is just uh, our familiar transfer functions for a grid connected inverter, operating in this case as active filter. Continue here in my script. So I have here the transfer function of the active power filter, the plant. I'm considering the sensor gain, which is this one. So this is the transfer function without considering the PWM delay, but I'm considering the sensor gain. 
later in this script I designed a controller. This is a controller with one zero and two poles. First I designed an analog controller which the transfer function is this one. This controller is also called type 2 controller. It has one zero and two poles. This is a controller that makes the phase to advance. It's a lead controller, lead phase controller. Later I discretize this controller using the backward transformation, the backward approximation. When I reach here the transfer functions for the controller. This is the digital controller designed without considering the delay of the PWM. I, I'm here with the simulation. I have here the active power filter. This is a single phase half bridge converter. This is the output filter. This is connected to the PCC. This is the grid. This is the measurement of the grid and this is the load. I'm here with the digital simulation in PC. Notice that my control is digital. It just makes sense for us to discuss about delay of PWM if we are in the digital domain. In order to make this simulation to be digital, I'm using here an ADC block and a PWM block of PC. Everything that I have between these two borders can be converted into code using the PC software. If I come here, simulate, generate code, this is already the code for my simulation that could be later uploaded in a digital signal controller. I have here the conservative power theory to obtain the reference. And this reference is compared to the output current, which it goes to this controller that I have just designed. If you go back here to my MATLAB, you see here the script of the controller. So I have here the vector letter B and the vector letter A, which is the numerator of the digital controller and the denominator of the digital controller. If you memorize this number, you see them right here. Okay, I have here right here. Let's see if I can do that. I have here all the controls that I designed in MATLAB. I just copied and pasted here. This is for the numerator and this is for the denominator. Exactly the values that the script said to me. And let's see. Let's close this. Okay. So I have here the error signal is right here, and this is passing through the digital controller first, cons not considering the delay of the PWM. The controller without considering the delay. I have here the reference is right here, the output current, which comes from this DC block, the EDC block, and this passes through the controller that I have just designed upon that script. This is the PWM block running the simulation. I'll see that the controller works good. The intention of this active power filter is to make the grid currents to be sinusoidal. Let's see the results. Later, this will be the second controller. They are here disabled. So it's green that shows that it's not operating in the simulation. 29%, this is enough. Let's get started here, for instance, with the load current. I have this load current. Let's see how was the grid current. This one is actually sinusoidal. And let's see here two more variables, the output current of the filter and also the reference. That's it. Let's make a, apply a zoom. I see here that the current is following its reference. The current in the grid is sinusoidal. This is the load current. We see here the grid current with some notches. This is quite normal due to these transitions to zero here. The derivative of the current is too high. The controller is unable to compensate that. This is quite normal, but actually we are seeing here that the reference is being followed. The output variable is following its signal reference. I can plot here also the error signal. We see that they are actually almost negligible. If I include here the same scale, let's suppose from minus 4 to 4, just to visualize in a similar scale from the previous results, we see here that the error is actually practically negligible zero. Okay, this is the controller without considering the delay of the PWM. 
the active power filter is working as expected. The, out, the grid current is sinusoidal and the, the active filter is following its reference with a neglectable error. If I return to my script and now design the same controller but now considering the delay. So I will comment this and uncheck this and later I need to comment this and uncomment this. But before that, if I return here to the, the slides, the PWM, if you want to consider the delay of the PWM, you need to modeling. And in this case, you can use this pedas approximation. It means that if you have a delay of TD, you have this equation here, and then it can be approximately by this one here. If I go back here, let's see if everything is okay. I can run that. Now I have a different controller. Now I'm considering the delay. I need to reach other types of variables. So my new controller is this one, being this one the numerator and this one the denominator. Let's go there and now I will disable this and enable this one. If I run this simulation, if you check while running, I updated here the coefficients of the digital controller. Now it is in accordance with the new values of the controller for the numerator and also for the denominator. It's right here. Let's see what will be the result of that. In this case, I had to include here the feed forward path of the grid. I don't know exactly why I had to do that, but it will give me better results. So let's see. Let me see here similar behavior. You see also that the current is being sinusoid at the grid. I have here also the current being followed by the reference signal. Again, if I change here the scale, back to that scale I was using from minus 4 to 4 I see that the error is still 0 compared with this scale here okay. so both of them give me good results in this active power future application if I go back here to the slides to the script I can compare both of them let me try to put a new figure I plot here F Delayed. Sorry. What's going on here? Let's see. This one. Ah, okay, it's bold, not plot. I have this bold diagram. Let me put a grid. If I define this one. I'll call it here without delay. Let's see. That's it. So I will include a plot of that. Let me try this. Oh, I forgot to hold. Let's get started again. So I have this one, sorry, which is this one. Read, hold, and this one. We see that they are coincident. Let me plot the grid again. What I'm plotting here is the two transfer function, one considering the delay and another one not considering the output delay. So you see here that for magnitude they are coincident. This is expected because the delay in the in a signal is just a shift on time, so there's no change in, in the spectrum. And here we see the phase for both cases that they are also most coincident up to at this frequency here. If you consider 3 dB of difference, we see that the difference is up to here. Okay, that's what I have to show to you. 
if I return here to these lines, later you can check carefully this script. Maybe I will make it available on my web page. But I have here all the procedures to design the digital controller without considering and considering the delay of the PWM. You may later compare some charts here. But for both cases, you just enable one and disable another one. And you see that for both cases, the, con the current controller is going well. So you see that the sinusoidal current is being achieved at the grid side of the grid. And if I return to this slide, I'd like to say that if you want to better understand the delay of PWM, the digital controller, this book for me is the best one. You can check later this book. It has all the required knowledge for you to understand the PWM delay, the digital control, the effect of sampling and other stuff. This is a really good book. And this one I'm listing here just because I took this approximation from that book. If you take this book, this is just analog, but if you can check, there is a good approach also on this considering the PWM of converters. In some conclusions of this presentation that I saw, you saw here that the delay of the PWM may not be considering in the application, the result is quite good. And of course, if you, you need to consider the delay of the PWM depending on your application. It depends on your topology, it depends on your control you are using, in what kind of control you are employing. It depends on also the sampling frequency, the switching frequency, because even when you do not consider you have one sample delay uh, appearance in your results. And as I suggest that I say to my students is if you are in in using, thinking about using it or not, try first without considering and see how the result would, would reach. If it is okay for you without considering, okay, go ahead. Otherwise, you need to return and modeling the PWM delay, which is a good approach to use this approximation here. Okay, so this is what I have to say to you. This is not a video to decide if you should use or not use. It's just a video to show you that it is possible to neglect the consideration of the delay of the PWM and sometimes the controller may work good. But sometimes this is not true, so it depends on your application. In this video, just to show you that as a first attempt, you can try not considering, but if you have more accuracy and more, if you want more accuracy and more, and something more sophisticated, you need to consider the delay of the PWM. And remember, go take a look at this book. This is for sure one of the best book about digital control in power electronics. It has a good approach on the delay, the sampling frequency, how the controller behaves, when you are using such a digital environment. Hope you understood. Again, this video is just a discussion. It's not a judgment if you should use or not use. I'd like to show you two approaches, one that I consider the PWM delay and another one that I do not consider. And in this case, for an active power filter, I see that for both cases, they work good. See you soon. Thank you for watching this video. You can go to my web page. Just as a suggestion, you can go there. If you go to the tutorials tab, you find a lot of tutorials, simulation files, in PC, in MATLAB. You can fi also find some PDF reports. You can have a lot of applications for power electronics. If you go here to my publications, you can get better acquaintance of my publications. And there are also simulation files from the publications where I am the main author. Just go there, go down here, and you find a lot of files from the papers I published recently. Okay, so now that's it. Thank you for watching this presentation.